quiet on the other side, I will slowly open the door. Well, you jiggle the iron handle, but it's locked. Ah, yes, okay, I've been waiting for this. I want to pick that lock. How does it work? Cool, pick the lock. Yeah, so uh, you see that D20? The, this, this one that I use for everything else? Yeah, precisely. You roll that and add your stuff. But that, there, there's just gotta be a more fun way to pick locks in D&D. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bob. This is where we learn how to have more fun playing D&D together. And this is my first RPG lock picking experience. Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, where you carefully nudged each tumbler, feeling for a subtle difference in your controller's vibration that signaled you to snap the tumbler into place. Sticking them all before you ran out of picks, unlock the goods. That predecessor to Skyrim was a big part of what got me hooked on the feeling of D&D before I ever rolled a d20. And lockpicking is just one fun part of it that I want to bring into D&D. So I made my own lockpicking minigame to make it more engaging than a single dice roll, to make it more fun for rogues who should be better at that kind of thing, while keeping it possible for everybody else and keeping it simple. Here's how it compares to the regular 5e lockpicking system. 5e requires thieves tools every time. The Bob version does not for simple locks. 5e uses 1d20 plus the character's dexterity modifier plus their proficiency bonus if the character is proficient with thieves tools versus the lock's DC. This version uses a number of d6s based on the DC, where proficiency and rogue sneak attack dice allow rerolls if necessary. 5e doesn't really say how long it takes or how many attempts you have or include any real consequences for failure. In other words, 5e lockpicking has no tension. My version has all of that and makes it fun, and here's how it actually works. Round up your lock DC by fives, where each five represents the overall complexity of the lock or its number of tumblers, as well as the minimum number of seconds required to pick it, just the DC times two and each five represents 1d6 the player must roll. And rolling above one is a success. So even rolling a single one is a failure that creates a complication, but Thieves Tools proficiency and sneak attack dice allow you to re-roll ones a limited number of times while the character spends extra time on the lock. For example, an easy DC 10 lock might represent a latch, a hook, or another simple locking mechanism. So at the DM's discretion, it does not require Thieves Tools. It just requires the character to spend at least 20 seconds picking while the player rolls 2d6. Any result that doesn't include a 1 is a success. If they did roll a 1, the lock becomes jammed with obvious signs of tampering. And now, only a character with Thieves Tools proficiency, such as a character with the criminal background or a rogue, can spend one additional minute attempting to unjam and unlock the mechanism represented by a single die roll, unless that character is a rogue with multiple sneak attack dice. Rogues also get a number of rerolls equal to their number of sneak attack dice, but each reroll still takes an additional minute of picking. And hey, all right, how about a live demo? So we're gonna pretend I am a level three rogue. So if we look over here at our little D&D Beyond window, we know I got proficiency in thieves tools and I have two sneak attack dice. So my rogue has a total of three re-rolls that they can use uh, when attempting to pick a lock. And we're gonna say I'm going up against a DC 20 lock. That means I know 20 divided by five, four, I need to roll 46. My character has about 40 seconds uh, that it's gonna take to pick this lock. So over here on Owlbear Rodeo, let's roll 46, see what we get. Not bad, that's a success, no ones. So without doing any math, I can just visually tell there's no ones here, my rogue succeeded. But let's re-roll, see if we can get some complications in the mix. Okay, we got one one here, uh, so that means I can use one of my three re-rolls because I have now jammed the lock, and it's gonna take me an additional minute here to use one of these re-rolls to try to fix what I messed up, and according to the you know DM, there's signs of damage here on this lock. So if we're in a dungeon, maybe that doesn't matter. But if I'm breaking into a shop or just any other place I'm not supposed to be, the owner or whoever might see that this lock has been messed up later. So that creates a long-term consequence just for the event of lock picking, which isn't something that usually comes up and can create a more dramatic situation down the line. But let's reroll this one and we get a two. 
So I've used one of my rerolls. If I got another one on that reroll, or if I had multiple ones here, you know, of course I can use more of those rerolls. And there are some ways we can make this a little more challenging. You could say you only get those three rerolls per short rest or per long rest, instead of just having them for every single lock you face, especially if your party is moving through a dungeon where they're gonna be coming up a lot of locked doors, you might not want them to have that many rerolls over and over and over. However, in a dungeon where each of those rerolls takes a full minute, that in itself is kind of a consequence. But another way you can make it even more extreme is that if they use, okay, their first reroll, you can say that's just from their proficiency in thieves tools, cool. But if they use any of their sneak attack dice to reroll, if they use those rerolls, they don't get to use those dice for their sneak attack until their next rest. And I know that one's pretty harsh, but some of you might want to keep it really tough. And all of these rules and even some of those modifications are explained on this nice, beautiful PDF that's going to be available to all of my patrons for this month of May. But if this video gets a thousand likes, I'm doing a thousand because my last like challenge was blown out of the water like instantly. So a thousand likes in this month, I will put up that post as public on my Patreon for the rest of the month. So anyone will be able to download it through the link below if this video gets a thousand likes in May. So share it with a friend and consider subscribing and joining our Patreon community like Tyson, Bax, Logan, Adam, Ambiggins, Claus, Seldom, and Kibbs the Gabo just did. Thank you for all your support and keep building.